Good morning. Thank you for your uh, prayers about my health. But starting today, I am back in office in person, and I am fully ready to do my work with full strength. But in the meantime, I received a lot of support from many people, including the healthcare professionals at the Prime Minister's office. And thanks to their work, I was able to continue to fulfill my public duties online and also was able to fully recover. I'd like to thank your cooperation and understanding. This time, I was infected with COVID-19, and that made home one thing to me, that is the effectiveness, efficacy of vaccines. I had just received the fourth dose of vaccine, which led to very mild symptoms for me. So based on my own experience, among others, I'd like to continue to ask for your cooperation on vaccination. Also, from October, the vaccination for the Omicron variant is scheduled to start, and we are going to accelerate the start of that vaccination even more. Now, looking back, one year ago, I decided to run for the LDP presidency, believing that I have to run to protect the democracy of Japan and the government should be based on people's trust. In October last year, I became the Prime Minister of Japan, and ever since then, I always made sure to listen to the people and be always attentive in the government while responding to various challenges such as COVID-19, the aggression on Ukraine, and the rising prices. In the meantime, we had two national elections, both of which we received people's mandate for my government. We are going to fulfill your expectations and resolve many challenges we face one by one. With that belief, I have reshuffled my cabinet to better respond to emergencies and to better execute our policies. However, let me be honest, people's trust in the government or in politics is wavering. I take it seriously. Again. I need to go back to my starting point when I decided to run for the LDP presidency last year. And I, um, I have a renewed determination to lead the efforts to regain people's trust in the government and politics, to realize the government of trust and empathy. I am fully determined to lead that effort. First, let me address the issue of the former Unification Church. We politicians conduct political activities, and as much as possible, we have to connect with people, as many people as possible, to listen to them, while also making efforts to be understood, our own views and who we are. On top of that, freedom of religion and the separation of church and state are important principles of our constitution and have to be respected to the utmost. That said, political activities involve responsibilities. Even a religious group is a member of the society and they must comply with laws and regulations concerned. That is a basic thing. On the other hand, for the politicians' part, when they engage with organizations or groups which are controversial in the society, they have to be strictly cautious. In my government, our ministers, state ministers, and parliamentary vice ministers 
will conduct a self-review of any ties with this particular organization and they promise to sever any tie they have had. However, speaking about LDP that members, including cabinet members, there have been press reports and the public are concerned and worried that some of them might have very close ties with the organization and people continue to express their concerns. As the president of the LDP, I would like to apologize for that. We take your concerns and worries seriously. And as the president of the LDP, I gave three point instructions to the Secretary General Motegi of LDP since last week. First, in order to fulfill our accountability as a political party, we will put together results of reviewing any ties with the particular group of our LDP lawmakers and we publish the result. Secondly, the LDP diet members will take serious lessons from past activities and will sever any tie with the organization. This will become the basic policy of our party and we will ensure that all of our LDP DOT members will sever any tie with that organization. Thirdly, for the future going forward, not to have any tie with a controversial group or organization which has pointed out issues in the society, the party will ensure to strengthen compliance check mechanism. The LDP will make sure to fulfill our accountability and seriously take a strict actions to regain people's trust. On top of that, speaking about the government's initiatives, we will do our utmost to help and support victims of fraudulent sales scheme in the name of religion. To that effort, we have established a liaison meeting, interagency liaison meeting on the issue of the former Unification Church, which is chaired by the Justice Minister and at the Consumer Affairs Agency, we established a task force to tackle the fraudulent sales schemes issue. As a whole of government effort, we will make our utmost efforts to rescue and help those victims. Next, I'd like to touch upon the state funeral for former Prime Minister Abe that is scheduled on September the 27th. During election campaigns, former Prime Minister Abe was inflicted by an atrocity. And I decided to conduct a state funeral. The foundation of democracy is national election. And he won national election for six times. He has won the trust from the people and as the longest for in the constitutional history, he served the responsibility for eight years and eight months. Secondly, the re reconstruction from Great East Japan earthquake and then the revitalization of Japanese economy. And he also led the strategic diplomacy based on Japan-US relations. He contributed to the peace and the order. He has left great achievements in many areas. Thirdly, Many foreign countries adopted a resolution to remember or mourn the Prime Minister and also light up public facilities in various ways across the nation. Respects and condolences have been expressed. And fourthly, the foundation of democracy is election campaigns and during such campaigns he died a violent death, and we will never yield to such violence. So we need to show that through our resolute stance. These are the rationales that I decided to conduct a state funeral, and that's what I have been explaining. From countries overseas, 
royalties, presidents, state leaders, and so forth. They have all expressed their will to attend the funeral. We must respond with courtesy as Japan to respond to those respects and condolences. And the state funeral, we are not forcing our people to express condolences, but we have received many criticism, including that the explanation was insufficient. As the prime minister who have decided to conduct the state funeral, I'd like to take those opinions and the criticism sincerely. And I feel the responsibility to answer the questions squarely. I'd like to go back to the beginner's spirit to provide a careful explanation. So by using the occasion of diet and taking the form of opposite diet session hearing, I will attend the session myself and with TV media outlets to make it visible for the public. I'd like to take the opportunity to answer the questions about my decision over the state funeral. And in order to make that happen as soon as possible, I have requested the Secretary General's and the Diet Affairs Chairs of the ruling bloc to make arrangements. And I'd like to also ask for support from the opposition parties. Lastly, I want to talk about our COVID measures. At the end of the seventh spike, towards the a new economic and uh, uh, economic economy and a society living with COVID, based on the opinions of experts and the people on the front line across the nation, we will review the notifiable disease surveillance. We will also review the isolation period for positive patients, and also setting up health follow-up center, we will establish a new recuperation scheme. And uh, the general view has already been put together, and we are preparing for the transition. However, we have to protect the lives of the elderly who have high risks, and we need to overcome the sixth, seventh spike. This is the priority. So on August the 24th, we have announced the anti-infectious measures in Japan responding to emergencies. We will monitor the trend of infection status, and we will show the holistic picture of the transition towards the period of living with COVID, and we will make that announcement at the appropriate timing. And in many countries, international exchanges have become active again and we should also participate in those exchanges and also to capitalize on the benefits of the depletion of yen. So for border controls, from September the 7th, we will raise the entry cap to up to 50,000 people. And then for all countries, we will also enable package tours without tour guides regulations will be further relaxed. My SOS will be improved and revamped to facilitate arrival formalities at airports. At home and abroad, we are now facing big challenges that only happen once in decades. I'd like to go back to the beginner spirit to carefully explain what we do and also deliver results by doing so to regain people's trust. Now we'd like to take questions. Please go to your nearest microphone and state your name and affiliation. Please ask only one question per person. We'd like to take questions from the coordinators, please. I am Seki from Kyoto 
Thank you very much for this opportunity. First, let me ask about, uh, sorry, so I'm happy that you recovered from COVID-19. And, and now let me ask about the uh, COVID measures of the government. As you mentioned earlier, the government is considering to a transition to a new stage to live with COVID, which includes review of the reporting of all cases or a shortening of recuperation period at home or easing rules about the outings of asymptomatic patients. So our priority is to overcome the seventh wave, as you said. Do you mean that until the seventh wave actually subsides, you are not going to introduce those new measures? Let me clarify. And regarding border measures, you are going to raise the daily limit of entry into Japan to 50,000 per day. And until a, today, the government always a target a very smooth entry into Japan, as smooth as in other G7 countries. Do you think that this 50,000 people will achieve that smooth entry, or eventually are you going to scrap all the daily limit, and in what time frame? First of all, nationwide, uh, all case reporting on nationwide scale, or the home recuperation of positive uh, patients. Regarding those uh, points, in the big picture of our transition to a new phase living with COVID, we'd like to show a clear picture forward and smooth, smoothly introduce new measures. And about the timing of announcing such new measures, we'd like to first closely watch the infection trend before we decide when to announce and implement those new measures. Second point was border measures. As I said today, from September 7th, we are going to raise the daily limit of new entrance into Japan to 50,000. And for all countries, we will allow packaged tour without tour guides coming to Japan from all countries. Those measures will be taken. However, beyond that, as you pointed out, of course, our target is to make entry into Japan as smooth as in other G7 countries. And we have to consider the infection state in and outside of Japan and the needs we have and the border measures taken by other countries. We consider those various factors so that we can even open, even more open up. Tokyo Shimbun. Konosuke from Tokyo and the Tunichi newspaper. Thank you. Let me ask about the state funeral for the former Prime Minister Abe. So, again, I, we'd like to pay the condolences to the deceased and the bereaved family. And for the state funeral, many opinion polls, including NHK and the Kyoto Tsushin, there's a majority against the state funeral. There's no law about the state funeral. There's no criteria. And then about um, spending contingency fund for the state funeral, there were questions and doubts. And deciding this by the, the cabinet, was that a mistake? And also the explanation by the government, it's not convincing. And then you said that the, there's, uh, the rationals, including paying courtesies, and there were a lot of uh, foreign leaders um, attending the funeral for Nagasone. So do you think that was a lack in courtesy back then? And then there was also a protest. Uh, there will be a protest against the state of funeral. So do you have any idea to review the decision? First of all, among the people, I understand that, that there are many different opinions. Having said that, as I have already mentioned, former Prime Minister Abe died during the campaigns and based on the cabinet establishment 
Act and the Cabinet decisions, we decided to host a state funeral. And about the rationals for the state funeral, I have already stated the four reasons. And for this state funeral, I understand that, that there are a lot of criticism and the explanation was not sufficient. And I made a decision as a, the Prime Minister to hold the state funeral. I take those opinions and the criticism sincerely and seriously, and I feel the responsibility to answer the questions from the people. So I decided that to use the occasion of a diet of, as offset diet session hearing, I will broadcast my answers to the people. And I'd like to have that opportunity. And I'd like to have that happen as soon as possible. I have requested the Secretary Generals and the Chairs of Diet Affairs Committees to make due arrangements. So again, I'd like to go back to the beginner spirit is the government to gain understanding from the people to conduct the state funeral. Now we'd like to receive questions from other media outlets. Please raise your hand if you have a question. And when called upon, please move up to the microphone. Nikkei, please. I am Akiyama from Nikkei. The other day, the GXADX meeting, and you mentioned the development of the new generation nuclear facility. And regarding the nuclear power plants, the government did not assume to establish any new nuclear power plant, but uh, it is understood that you actually decided to allow to establish a new nuclear power plant. And could you share your specific image of how it is going to happen? And the third reactor at the Mihama nuclear power plant, which is over 40 years old, there are several very old nuclear reactors. And do you have them in mind? Recently, we have the energy situation, tough energy situation in Japan and abroad. And based on that, energy is the foundation of people's daily living and our industry. And stable supply of energy have to be secured. To that end, far into the future, in order to ensure the stable supply of energy in Japan, we have to have all options available. From that perspective, at the uh, GX meeting, the meeting had the external experts on board. And without ruling out any option, we asked them to consider all options. And just like in the past, safety is of paramount importance and will be top priority, of course. This a uh, next generation nuclear facility or the new module reactor or a fast speed reactor, many technologies are uh, under development. And on those issues, There's a technical technology development. We would like to we like experts to discuss those new technologies as well. Considering various factors and elements, the development of this new generation of reactor or the extension of the operation period. By the end of the year, we'd like to receive views of the experts. And after receiving, after receiving them and after listening to them, we'd like to decide on the future direction. 
So at the GX meeting, we will maintain all options open and available. And from that perspective, we asked experts to discuss different options. Fukui from Fuji TV, thank you. On state funeral. So you are going to explain at the diet, you said, and about decision of the state funeral and the explanation. There is a voice that's pointing out that the order is wrong. And also people uh, who are former uh, state leaders will also attend the funeral. So people also draw, uh, this is also drawing attention on diplomacy. So what, what are going to be the discussions at the Diet then? So taking the occasion of the state funeral, many foreign dignitaries are going to visit Japan. And the day before the state funeral to the next day of the funeral, I will try to have as many by meetings as possible. And former Prime Minister Abe has left many legacies of diplomacy that should be taken over and then towards the respects shown by foreign countries that we should respond to those. Like I said in the beginning about the state funeral, I am aware that there are a lot of opinions and the criticism. And on that point, I have been explaining that, but it was insufficient, as people pointed out. So taking the, uh, the occasion of the diet session, I'd like to cover other bases to provide more careful explanation to conduct this state funeral. Takaya Nagi-san from Nippon TV, please. I am Takaya Nagi, Nippon TV. Let me ask about the state funeral, state funeral for the uh, former Prime Minister Abe. The expected cost is going to be about 250 million yen, but some people point out that the cost could be even larger for security of dignitaries. So before the state funeral, do you plan to uh, disclose the estimate of the total cost, including security? First. So you asked about the potential cost. So uh, among the funeral, direct funeral cost regarding the facility for the funeral, uh, we had the joint funeral for former Prime Minister Nakasone, which was jointly organized by the cabinet and LDP. And the facility, uh, indoor facility, will be similar to that scale. However, on top of that, our exterior, we will receive uh, flowers from the general public in different uh, places. And in case of Mr. Nakasone's funeral, we received about 600 guests. But this time, for a Prime Minister Abe, we expect about 6,000 people visiting from in Japan and outside of Japan. And on top of that, we have to arrange simultaneous interpretation for dignitaries from overseas. And of course, the cost to ensure sufficient security arrangements. So, speaking about the cost, compared to the joint funeral for Mr. Nakasone, the cost will be larger by about 50 million yen. 
we already explained that. And I understand that your question is about additional cost that could be spent to receive the foreign dignitaries and to ensure security arrangement for them. I understood that was your question. And speaking about that part, in our annual budget, security, uh, the budget for security and receiving dignitaries, we have budget for that already. So about the security or reception, just like the past joint funerals, within the existing budget, these costs will be spent. So uh, that is our policy. But regarding specific numbers or uh, expenses, in particular, there will be foreign dignitaries coming. And we are receiving various requests and communicating, communicating with them. And depending on how many of them will come, the cost for their reception and security will change. So we have to wait until we know the actual number of foreign dignitaries coming. Uh, that is the truth. So as I said earlier, within the budget we are going to handle, but regarding a specific amount of money, once we know the final actual number of foreign dignitaries coming, we will be able to indicate the cost. Thank you very much. Shimatsu from Asahi newspaper. My question is about the relations between former Unification Church and the LDP. So you said during an, an interview that you were going to cut tie between the LDP and the former Unification Church. When it comes to the relations in the center of that, Prime Minister Abe is always there, and former Prime Minister Abe was also the kind of central piece for the election campaigns. And are you going to review the relations between the church and the former Prime Minister Abe? As I stated earlier, up to date, all the ties with the church, we have, I have already instructed to review it. And the result of the review needs to be looked at as a party. And as a party, how to publicize that result and how to communicate with the public are going to be critical. As, the, as for the matter that you pointed out, what kind of relationship did former Prime Minister Abe have with the church since he's already passed? It is hard for us to sufficiently understand that. But based on the policies that I have mentioned before, as a, a party as a whole, this is something that we need to work on properly. And what's more importantly is to sever any ties with this organization. We will review all the relations that happened in the past. Of course, I have already instructed that. But this is going to be the basic policy for the party. And as the party, we will ask all the LDP uh, parliament members to execute this policy. This is going to be a very important point, I believe. 
So including putting together those results of review over the ties with those organizations, we need to clear the doubts and that's what we are going to do as a party. Nishimura-san from Radio France, please. I am Nishimura from Radio France. About, let me ask about religious groups. As a journalist, as I cover this religious matters, the issue of risk groups is not just about their ties with the politicians, but because of their activities, we see child abuse, in many cases of child abuse, so uh, even more than the past. Don't you think that we should monitor their activities even more than the past? Or uh, maybe you can, you have to, you have to urgently open some uh, call centers to listen to the victims. Don't you think that the th second or third generations of the worshippers and followers of religious groups have not been fully addressed? Thank you. So, as I touched upon earlier, politicians having ties with groups and organizations which uh, pointed out some issues in the society, know how to engage with them as politician and about severing ties with such groups. We have to do it right. But there's another very important point. Those groups or organizations causing damages to people the victims and how the government can support them and respond to the issue as the government. We recognize this issue and we have to address it. This is another very important point. And you talked to that point and I fully agree with you. We have to address this issue. And as I said in my beginning statement, the Justice Minister has been appointed as a chair of the interagency liaison meeting on this issue. We are going to establish a liaison meeting and at the Consumer Affairs Agency fraudulent sales schemes in the name of religion and other issues. The agency will also respond to those issues. Also, we have to take measures to arrange support for the people who are suffering and suffering damages, the victims. So the the second issue you pointed out, we will work hard to fully respond to that. Hello from TV Asahi on COVID-19 measures. You talked about the holistic picture that is now under consideration, and that is after the end of the seventh uh, spike, but I think there were a lot of people having concerns over deregulation at this point. So, in terms of uh, striking the balance over anti-infectious measures and, and uh, economic so uh, social activities, I think part of the reasons is that we don't see the the scientific evidence based on experts' opinions. So, are you going to announce any of the scientific evidence behind your policies? What if the infection spreads after the deregulation? What are you going to do? So the first thing I'm going to say is that we are going to show the holistic picture to transit to a new phase. We will review the notifiable disease surveillance, the reduction of isolation period for people tested positive, and these are all based on the proposals of experts. 
We cannot ignore the opinions of the experts. We are not taking any policy without listening to the experts. We always communicate the wisdom before we make any decisions. That's what I want to emphasize. In Japan, we have overcome six waves of infection. And we have accumulated many scientific evidence. And I believe as a nation, we now have a stronger scheme. And there is also a lot of insights from overseas and at home and abroad based on all of those scientific insights. We'd like to prevent infections and also to activate social economic activities. That's what we are working on. The proposals by experts are always being taken into perspective. And of course, the first priority is to protect the people's lives. If we see uh, an important variant emerging in the future and put in burden on medical system, we of course need to act in a flexible manner. So as you pointed out, we need to listen to what the experts have to say and reflect their opinions into government measures to strike a good balance between anti-infectious measures and social economic activities. Nishi Nippon newspaper. Let me uh, ask about the establishment of new nuclear power plants. As you mentioned earlier, in order to ensure safety of nuclear power plants, what are the points you want to emphasize? And the government has said that we want to be less dependent on nuclear power, and are you going to change the direction in that regard? Thank you. First, let me address your second question. As much as possible, we will reduce our reliance or dependency on nuclear power, and that direction has not changed. Thorough energy saving and the maximum introduction of renewable energy will help us. Before the 2011 earthquake, the nuclear power was about 30% of our energy, and from that level, we were reduced. And by 2030, we target to achieve 20 to 22 percent, and by 2050, we want to achieve carbon neutrality. With that direction, we are going to minimize our dependency on nuclear power, and this direction has not changed at all, 2030 or 2050, to achieve those targets in the future. This time, we are speaking about the next generation reactors for nuclear power plants. We asked experts to consider all options possible to achieve those targets in the future. And about the safety aspect, when we implement and work on those initiatives, just as in the past, safety will be the top priority, which is a very basic point and will never change. Based on scientific perspective, we have to ensure safety of nuclear, nuclear power, uh, nuclear energy, and the NRA, the Nuclear uh, Regulation Authority, which is quite independent, will exercise the nuclear regulation and restrictions in a very strict manner, and that will not change. So we will stick to those principles while ensuring stable supply of energy. And to ensure stable energy supply, we are not going to rule out any option, and we are ready to discuss all of them. Hey, 
Higuchi from Chugoku newspaper about former President Gorbachev's uh, pass away in November in Hiroshima. You are going to attend uh, the meeting. And then last year, you showed the, the concept. And Mr. Gorbachev, he led to the end of the Cold War. And then as a leader to realize a new free world, what is your take on his passed away? What is, could you comment on that? Former President Gorbachev has passed away. I pay my heartfelt condolences. Mr. Gorbachev is the leader of the Soviet Union. And after the First World War, the divided Europe, Europe and the East and the West, he has contributed to the reunification. And he also agreed to reduce nuclear weapons. And he also contributed to the end of the Cold War. In relation to Japan, in 1991, as a state leader, he visited Japan for the first time. He came to Nagasaki Prefecture. After his retirement as a, from the president in 1992, he also visited Hiroshima as a leader to agree with denuclearization. He's got many achievements. He has a grand strategic vision and resolve of execution. He's left great achievements. Again, we respect his achievements, and I pay condolences to his pathway. Uh, Azumi. Azumi San, freelance, please. I'm Azumi, freelance. Let me ask about the state funeral for uh, former Prime Minister Abe. Uh, first of all, I'd like to express my condolences for a Mr. Abe. And earlier, you spoke about four major achievements of Mr. Abe, which is fully understood widely. But on the other hand, Mr. Ohiro and Mr. Obuchi, who died as an incumbent prime minister, and they both were given the joint funeral by the cabinet and the party. And this controversy is happening because of the lack of objective criteria whether or not to make state funeral. And in joint funeral, half of the cost is paid by the government. But in case of state funeral, 100% of the cost have to be paid by the government, which means that increased expenditure spending from the government. And how are you going to explain to the people about this point? And as the president of the Liberal Democratic Party, are you also thinking about having the party's funeral for Mr. Abe? Thank you. First, regarding the state funeral for Mr. Abe, as I said, the cabinet office implementation law or the cabinet approvals are the basis for the decision to have a state funeral and the reasons of the decision. As I mentioned earlier, he served for eight years and eight months as, pres as prime minister, which is the longest in our constitutional history. And during an election, which is the cornerstone of democracy, he was killed by a violent act. And this is unprecedented. In addition, as I said earlier, he was instrumental in leading Japan out of the calamity of the Great East Japan earthquake, and he also had a lot of great achievements in diplomacy. And on top of that, he is highly regarded by other countries. Parliaments of many countries adopted resolution to remember him. 
or foreign governments make decisions about mourning his death, or they lit up official facilities to remember him. In various ways, many countries showed condolences and respect for him in a national manner. Also, we received many messages from foreign dignitaries, and those messages, many of them, addressed to the Japanese people as a whole. Considering this situation, we decided to organize a ceremony to show our respect and our condolences so that we can receive dignitaries from overseas with full courtesy and respect. I have been explaining our decision in this manner. And to answer to your question, I understand you asked whether or not we are going to set an objective criteria about the state funeral decisions. The government at the time have to make a comprehensive decision. I think that is what it should be. Setting a predefined criteria and apply to all the cases is not the way to go. International circumstances, as I mentioned, and the domestic situation, as well as the series of events running up to the death. Based on all these factors, the government have to make an appropriate decision. So the reasons or history of events, background or various procedures. And the people's views and criticism. The government is going to make an utmost effort to thoroughly explain our decision to the people. Ishii from Hokkaido newspaper. In your opening remarks, you said that you'd like to go back to a beginner's spirit. So as a prime minister, do you think that you've forgotten your beginner's spirit, spirit? Or the trust towards the government is wavering? Was the government complacent? Could you please give more specific examples? Well, to be specific, rather than as a prime minister or the LDP, as we listen to the voices of the people, we feel that the trust towards the government, towards the politics, is wavering. That's what I've been saying. To go back to the beginner's spirit, last August, the LDP election, presidential election, uh, took place. And uh, I had a press conference. And I said the faith in politics is important than anything. And I ran the candidacy for the LDP president. And I said that I will protect the democracy of our country. I'd like to go back to that point and to answer to meet the mandate of the people. That's what I think right now. And I'd like to visualize uh, my ideas. I'm Kaya from Yomiri newspaper. Let me ask about the issue of the former Unification Church. This issue has led to declining approval rating of the cabinet affecting the administration. So let me ask your own view. Why this issue has led to this big mistrust in the government or politics in the first place? And the LDP is going to uh, put together the uh, result, uh, reviews of all member, uh, all that 
LDP that members, and you also announced that as a basic policy of the party, you are going to sever ties with the group. But why it took so long time to reach this point and this decision? Because you lacking of decisive action might have led to this current mistrust among the people. What do you think? Thank you. First of all, in the opinion polls, the approval rating fell. The issue of the unification church and the issue of the state funeral affected. And in, in this background, the people's trust in politics is wavering, and I believe that is a major factor behind. And to answer to your question why it took so long to address this issue of the unification church. In the society, as many people are pointing out, for decades there have been various relationships and ties. And we need to find out what kind of ties existed, and the LDP needed the time to find out the relationship between politics and religious groups, what it should be. These are basic questions we have to give thoughts to, and what it should be, what it should have been. On these questions, we have made efforts to find out what actually happened to answer, to answer those questions. So the party will put together the results of all reviews. And as the policy of the party, we are going to sever ties with the group. And by thoroughly enforcing, implementing these measures, we like to regain people's trust. In parallel, Japan faces many challenges, biggest in decades, COVID-19 economy, diplomacy, defense, or declining birth rate. Those are important major challenges, and we have to have thorough discussions on these issues so that we can produce results to the people, and that will lead to regain the trust by the people. We will take two more questions. Jimbo from videonews.com. On the former unification church issue, to follow up the previous question, so more than 100 LDP members had ties with socially controversial organizations. And you said that investigation will be conducted and also severe ties with those organizations. I want to ask, is this an issue limited to this individual organization, former Unification Church? Uh, which means, did this organization do something specific that led to this, or the system of the government the elections? Is there any issue that's hidden in the system? Maybe people disguise themselves and they can get into the government easily? Was that really the case? Maybe it's not enough just by severing the ties. So in your future response, it seems like your solutions are targeting the former unification church. But maybe it's not limited to that. So could you elaborate on that? Well, maybe my explanation wasn't sufficient. I mentioned the three points. First, we will 
announce and put to, we'll put together and announce the results of the review. And number two is to sever ties. And number three is that for with any organizations that are socially controversial, there shouldn't be any ties, and we will strengthen the compliance mechanism. So that is not only limited to this organization, with any socially controversial organizations, we need to have appropriate decisions within the party. And we think that it's important to address this issue. Even the religious group is a member of the society and, and has complied with laws and the regulations concerned. So we also need to address the issues relating to the victims of fraudulent schemes. That's another important point. We have one problem that is the ties between the politic and those organizations, and another problem that is that there are victims. How do we stand by those people? We need to listen to their problems, and we need to provide relief. That's also the responsibility of the government. And we'd like to work on both issues. From those point of views, we first need to investigate the audit ties with this organization, this specific organization. And then if there is any ties that happen in the future with socially controversial organization, what we should do as a government, we need to address those issues. Sorry, a follow-up question. So for measures in the future, we need to establish a due scheme. And I have instructed the Secretary General. And the details need to be worked out as soon as possible. Tamara from Sankei. Let me ask about the state funeral for Mr. Abe again. So this time, about the expression of condolences, the government did not seek cabinet approval to request ministries and agencies to express condolences, which is quite unusual because you requested condolence for past uh, former prime ministers. So on the day of the funeral, are you going to take any measures to uh, express condolences or to observe silent prayer? Thank you. First, regarding the cab a cabinet decision, for the state funeral for former Prime Minister Yoshida, in addition to the ministries and agencies expressing condolences for a, a schools or a private a sector business companies, we also a, asked for their cooperation in expression of condolences. And to that end, there was a cabinet decision to ask for such cooperation. But this time, for Mr. Abe's state funeral, we should avoid any misunderstanding that such expression of condolences imposed by the government. So we are not going to ask for such cooperation. And regarding the local municipalities, or other local uh, institutions, we are not going to request them to express their condolences. And regarding the government ministries and agencies, as we did conventionally, we are going to fly a flag at half mast and at a certain time during the funeral service, we are going to have silent prayer. Thank you very much. This is the end of today's press conference. 
And if you have more questions, please send your question later to the contact person. We will reply in writing. Thank you very much for your cooperation. This concludes the press conference.